Hey everybody, this is Sam from Camel Scientific. Uh, we're just doing a little backyard experiment, backyard look at the uh, Hughes 9502. Uh, specifically, just wanted to show the power-up sequence and some uh, current draw uh, numbers. Uh, battery voltage is about 12.9 right now. Um, but you can see, I just powered it up. Um, we got the power light, then all three lights then the first two lights and then the unit will start to go um, to flash the power light um, then we'll see it flashing the um, the uh, GPS light and then it'll move on to the satellite link light there we go it's going to the uh, GPS light sitting there drawing about uh, 0.3 amps, 0.2 amps now so it goes through these various states as the uh, the terminal. Uh, this is the terminal here at the top. The terminal um, gets a fix um, as it's trying to get a narrow beam fix on the Inmarsat uh, BGAN network. Uh, and with a narrow fix, the Hughes 9502 um, provides us an internet connection, internet access. So it's it's got a narrow fix now. You can see all the lights are on. Um, here in a little bit, it'll actually um, uh, time out and go to a regional fix, which is a lower power state. The um, you can get the Hughes 9502 uh, package, the full package from Campbell Scientific. We've got everything you need uh, to install it and get it connected to uh, your data logger. Um, uh, got really nice mounting brackets for the uh, terminal itself uh, so this is so this is the terminal uh, real nice mounting bracket for being able to mount the terminal flat um, or on edge um, also uh, the package comes with the antenna and uh, the antenna cable um, and an antenna mounting bracket you can see the antenna here in the background uh, real nice uh, antenna mounting bracket so you can see the lights just went off on the terminal um, here and soon um, the terminal will go into a lower power state as it gets a regional beam fix. <clears throat> so the kit also comes with all the cables you need to power the 9502 or, or to connect it up to a you know like a PS100 uh, or a PS150 or a, or a PS200 something like that um, it also comes with all the cables you need to connect it to um, an NL device, um, you know, an Ethernet cable. It comes with um, a DB9 cable that you can use to control, uh, do a hardware control of the uh, power state of the 9502. <clears throat> so there you go. We dropped into a little bit lower power state there, 0 0.7, uh, 0.07 amps. Okay. So it's sitting there on a regional fix. So this device, uh, you can connect it to a CR1000 or CR3000 with, say, like an NL116 or NL121. Um, or you can connect it to um, any of our data loggers with an NL201. Um, so, you know, basically we need an Ethernet interface here. Uh, of course, the CR6 has got the Ethernet uh, port built right in. Um, all of them have the ability to... Uh, talk to the 9502, um, use it to access the internet, uh, do things like connecting back to a LoggerNet server or a PackBus router for doing PackBus TCP. Uh, uh, most of our loggers have the ability of sending data via email uh, or FTP, uh, being queried with DMP3 or Modbus TCP. So a wide variety of uh, ways to get your, uh, your data from your data logger over the internet. Uh, so we're just going to take a. I'm just going to take a quick look. Obviously, this is just out on my back porch, so it's uh, not really pulled together. Just doing a little backyard experiment um, here. Um, I've got my multimeter in line uh, to measure the current draw uh, straight from this PS100. Of course, now we sell the PS150, which is uh, actually much more suitable for this application because it can um, uh, supply the the higher current draws. You know, needed when this device is transmitting. Um, I've also got the CR1000 with the NL116. 
Um, I've got this uh, cable here that goes to the GNSS port um, on the Hughes, and by toggling pin 9 on, on the Hughes, we can actually um, uh, force the unit into a low power sleep state. If you set port 9 high, it puts the Hughes um, into a deep sleep, uh, takes it off the network, um, but it's a real convenient way instead of having to try to control the system power with you know, a relay or something like that. Uh, so there's your antenna cable, and it goes over to your antenna mounting bracket. Of course, this would be connected to a mast um, on your station. <clears throat> so we're just going to take a look at um, a little demo. I guess I got set up here. Um, I've got I'm just got my Sierra 1000 running a simple program here. Um, we're taking a look at the power draw, and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to tell my data logger to FTP. Uh, some data. So as soon as I started that, the data logger attempted to communicate with the internet. It caused the um, 9502 to attempt to get a narrow uh, beam fix. And we can see that um, it didn't get it right away. It takes a little bit, you know, it takes a few seconds for it to get the fix. Oh, but there we go. Uh, the FTP data went to zero and our FTP result was negative one, which means success. We transferred our data. So uh, we'll go and take a look at our FTP site. Let me just refresh this. Oh, and there we see our file showed up. About a two kilobyte file there uh, that contains our CSV data. Okay. So it's going to stay in this um, narrow beam fix um, until a timeout. You can actually. Um, uh, control this with a setting in the 9502. There's actually a wake on LAN um, setting and a setting that tells you how long um, it should wait, you know, before it's considered idle. Right now I have the wake on LAN turned off, turned off, you know, so it just sits there all the time, um, either in this regional beam or narrow beam. Uh, you can actually get a static IP address um, for this unit, a public static IP address. So instead of pushing data, you know, with PackBus TCP callbacks or FTP or email, you can actually have something like LoggerNet or a DMP3 master or Modbus um, uh, client actually connect into your station, initiate the communications remotely. Uh, so uh, right now I just have a private IP, so I'm, I'm doing everything initiated by the data logger. The data loggers initiating the connection back to the internet, back to the servers, and pushing data. So there, it uh, you can see it just dropped down to a lower power state. We can get this even lower by actually toggling that pin 9 on the GNS port, GNSS port I, that I was told you about. So I have this little flag. All it will do is uh, it'll set control port 8 on my data logger high, uh, which is connected to pin 9 on that, on that DB9. And when I set that high, you'll see um, the unit just goes into this deep sleep. It's... Uh, it's, you know, it's not zero. Um, you know, uh, I'm sitting here monitoring on a 20 amp um, scale, but it's it's pretty low. Uh, so it's a pretty convenient way to put it to sleep. Um, it does take a while. I mean, it, when you come out of this state, it's it's rebooting. I mean, it's coming from a cold boot state. So uh, you can see if I take this back to uh, take that pin nine back low, um, it 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 starts the boot process all the way over again. So it takes, you know, probably two minutes or so, uh, depending on, uh, you know, uh, your signal strength and, and, and how well you have the antenna placed and everything. But it goes through the whole cycle that we just viewed at the beginning of the video. Uh, it's getting, um, it's going to start blinking the power light, then it'll start blinking the, uh, the uh, location and then the satellite and once this um, has a fix again we can push data again so you wouldn't want to um, use this pin 9 this deep sleep mode um, for a station that needs um, very responsive um, like event reporting time you know like I've detected a flood event and I need to turn it on and tell somebody right away um, you know, it's going to take a few minutes, uh, two minutes probably about, to to come up. Um, 
so we're there's our time we're still not on yet but it's great for environmental monitoring um, uh, you know you turn it on and um, you know you report your data once an hour something like that or this is a backup you know for um, a uh, event reporting network you know you keep it in the deep sleep until um, you need it then you turn it on and leave it on and um, just keep it on the network and um, it'll be it's real snappy real response so it's on the network now there's our timestamp and we can uh, do our FTP again so I'll just toggle that I'm just manually doing this obviously out in the field this would be under program control so it's just uh, trying to get that um, that internet context, and uh, we'll see. Yep. Okay. FTP data went to zero, and our FTP result is still negative one, which means uh, it's just it was successful. I probably should have reset that. <clears throat> Another way of saving power is to actually um, turn the NL device off, so the day logger can. Um, use the IP net power instruction to put the NL device into a low power mode. So you can see I toggled that and our network lights are off. So we're just saving ourselves about, uh, you know, anywhere between 20 and 60 mils, um, milliamps at, um, you know, 12 and a, 12 and a half, 13 volts um, when we do that depending on the device you're using. So I can just toggle that back on and immediately the d data logger's uh, ethernet lights start coming back on. It uh, does its negotiation, any nego negotiations it needs to do with the Hughes 9502 to get back on. The Hughes is uh, still up, still on the network. It hasn't um, dropped off yet. So I'm just going to uh, see what happens here. I'm going to FTP this again. See what kind of responsiveness we get. It jumps up a little bit. Get both of those in there. And it's done. So you saw it uh, jump up there quick. Um, you know, 500 mils or whatever. Um, you know, within the, the responsiveness and resolution of my multimeter here. All right, that's it.